All right, now we're going to look at uh, some property diagrams, specifically the TS uh, diagram, um, which has entropy in it. So uh, we know that the, for the definition for entropy, uh, DS is delta Q over T of an internally reversible uh, process. Uh, let's do a little bit of rearranging. I'm going to multiply this T on the other side. And so we've got TDS is equal to delta Q. Um, so, or, or the, you know, change in Q, well, if we, sorry, if we want uh, capital Q, if we want the heat transfer, uh, then we can take the integral of both sides uh, to get Q. So here we go. Q of an internally reversible process is the integral of TDS. So the heat transfer is the integral of TDS. So if we're looking at a TS diagram, if we're looking at a TS diagram, Q is the integral of TDS. So Q would be this area under the curve. Q, the Q of the internally reversible right q is intern sorry q is the internally reversible heat transfer um, it is the area under the t s diagram all right q is the area under TS diagram. So let's think about the TS diagram for an isothermal process. <clears throat> an isothermal process, what would it look like on the TS diagram? Well, the temperature stays constant. So whatever temperature is at, it stays uh, there. Maybe entropy is increasing. <clears throat> but the Q would be this area under the curve, which is a rectangle for an isothermal process. Q would be temperature times delta S for uh, internally right internally reversible Q equals T delta S. And again, that's only for isothermal. Uh, what about an isentropic process? What does that look like on the TS diagram? Well, if it's isentropic, maybe it starts here and it goes d down to there or up to there, um, but entropy stays the same. What was is the area under the curve for that? Uh, nothing, so Q is zero, but we already knew that. Um, Q is zero for, and this is the internally reversible Q. We already knew that if, if we're talking about reversible and isentropic, <clears throat> then we know it's adiabatic. So that's just another way to show that it's adiabatic. So these TS diagrams are interesting, <clears throat> and finding the area under the TS diagram gives you the value for the internally reversible heat transfer. Now another interesting uh, diagram is the Mollier diagram, um, or the enthalpy entropy HS diagram. <clears throat> so for the HS diagram, what these uh, can kind of show, um, here's our change in H, right? Our delta H is on this axis, and our, here's our ch delta S is right here, right? Change in H change in S. <clears throat> so this change in H is sort of a measure of work. Our delta H is, is a measure of work. And our delta S is a measure of irreversibilities. Delta as a measure of irreversibility. So this diagram kind of shows, you know, and you can compare different, you know, paths, uh, which paths have more work, which paths have less work, which have paths have more 
are more irreversible, or which ones are more reversible? Which ones are closer to the Carnot, the theoretical limit? All right, so here's the TS diagram of the Carnot cycle. So we, we've done the uh, PV, I believe, diagram of the Carnot cycle. If you remember that, it looks something like this, 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 this. Um, but I think the TS diagram really shows why the Carnot uh, is the best. It's the ideal cycle. For the, Car for the Carnot cycle, we, had, we started at state 1 and we had an isothermal uh, QN isothermal process, then we actually have an isentropic uh, process to state 3, and then an isothermal process to, to state 4, and back isentropic to state uh, 2. And what did we say? We said the area under the TS diagram is Q, so from 1 to 2, the Q would be this whole rectangle. QH would be this blue. The QL would be from 3 to 4. That would be this green. QL is this green. And the difference in the two would be the work. Work would be QH minus QL, which is this, you know, pink area on the chart. So that's what's a car. That is what a Carnot cycle looks like on the TS diagram. All right. So, uh, section six, it's, it's kind of in interesting. I think it's a funny um, little paragraph in, in the book. Uh, but entropy, let's just say, it's really molecular disorder. It's really molecular disorder. It's, it's, a, you know, it's a, a measure of disorder. Uh, and if you, it's really, it really goes down to the molecular level, <clears throat> which we won't get into in this um, class. All right, 7-7. Seven, seven. Real quickly is just the TDS relations. Uh, you could, we could, we could derive these, um, but it really comes from the fact that this TDS is Q, and this PDV is work, and this DU is, is just that, DU. All right, so we're just going to uh, have these um, four relations, these four equations, uh, so that we can use later. But they come from conservation of energy. They come from conservation of energy. And so these are <coughs> relations. So we have equations for... Uh, differential changes in entropy and we have this DS in terms of other properties in terms of age and pressure and temperature and DU okay all right, so uh, we're going to take this, and you, you know that du uh, t, or, or, sorry, uh, du is really C, cv, right? And dh is really, is related, or not, not exactly, but it comes from specific heats. And dH is Cp, so we're going to take that and go to 7-8 and talk about the entropy changes of solids and liquids. So we can take uh, 
This equation right here, this ds equation, and I'm not going to do the derivation, but I think you can see it. For solids and liquids, we're going to assume that it is incompressible. And so ds is equal to du over t, and substituting for uh, specific heats the, and taking the integral of both sides, S2 minus S1 is equal to the integral of C 1 over T dt. Integral of C 1 over T dt. And if C is constant, we can take this out of the equation and we can get C uh, at some constant or average temperature. And what's the integral of 1 over T dt? It is ln of T2 over T1. So now we have an equation for the change in entropy using specific heats and using the temperatures. This is for uh, solids and liquids. So either this is more accurate, um, but if we, if, so we ha if we have an equation for C, we can use that under the integral, um, or we can just assume that C stays the same, or we can see the change in C from one temperature to the next temperature, take the average, uh, take the C at the average temperature, use that times ln T2 over T1. So here, that, that's the main point right here. We've got an equation for change in entropy for solids and liquids um, no, using the specific heat, C value. Just a note, uh, just look at this equation. If the process is isentropic, then what does that mean for this equation? If it's isentropic, this side of the equation is zero. And so, you know, divide that C to the other side of the equation. Uh, when is ln zero? ln of one is zero. So if it's isentropic, T2 over T1 is equal to one. So for incompressible substances like solids and liquids, isentropic also means isothermal. Alright, so there's just a note, something to, to note. Solids and liquids, um, if it's isentropic, it's also isothermal. Alright, let's look at one solids and liquids problem. Uh, liquid methane. Uh, it's commonly used in various cryogenic applications. Critical temperature is 191K and thus must be must be maintained below 191 Kelvin. Keep it in liquid phase. The properties of liquid at various temperatures are given in the table. Determine the entropy change as it undergoes a process from 110 Kelvin to, and 1 MPa to 120 and 5 MPa using tabulated properties and then approximating liquid methane as incompressible and using the equation that we just uh, derived up here that I put with four stars <clears throat> for liquid methane. All right, so tabulate properties, hey, that, that's, that's best, most accurate, and sometimes easiest. All right, it, it goes from 110K and 1 M MPa. All right, so here is our S1. Right there is our S1, so S2 minus, the change in S is S2 minus S1. <clears throat> There's my S1, 4.875 kilojoules per kilogram K. <clears throat> my final S2, it's at 120 K at 5 MPa, so down here, 5.145. <clears throat> so the change in entropy... <clears throat> is point, point 0.270 kilojoules per kilogram K. All right, that's most accurate. Now, uh, what if we wanted to use that equation? Delta S is C average times ln T2 over T1. All right, well, what is the C average? Um, well, the specific heat at the initial state is right there. The specific heat at the final state is right there. So the average of the two, 3.471 and 3.486 divided by 2, 
the average I've got 3.4785 kilojoules per kilogram K times natural log T2 over T1. This, these have to be in um, absolute temperatures. Uh, of course, Kelvin is absolute temperature, so we're fine. So our delta S is 0 0.303 kilojoules per kilogram K. So there's my delta S right there. So just a note that up here, this needs to be absolute. You would get different answers if you had those in Celsius. All right, so there is the delta S. And what is the error in this assumption? What's the error in this assumption? So, well, what is the difference? What is the difference? Uh, let's see, 0 0.303 minus 0 0.270 divided by the original. 0 0.270 divided by the most accurate was just 0 0.270. 0 0.122. Uh, so the error, 12.2%. Uh, that can get significant, right? Uh, but if we don't have property tables, sometimes we don't have a choice. Uh, we need to use uh, delta S is C, ln T2 over T1.